Hello, and welcome to Booked on Shalom World TV. I'm your host, Claire Hinshaw. Today we are speaking with Arthur Powers, author of The Book of Jotham. Arthur Powers went to Brazil in 1969 as a Peace Corps volunteer and lived most of his adult life there. From 1985 to 1992, he and his wife Brenda, with their two daughters, served as Catholic lay missionaries in Eastern Amazon. Arthur subsequently directed Catholic Relief Services in Brazil. He and Brenda currently live in Raleigh, North Carolina, where Arthur serves as a permanent deacon. Arthur received a fellowship in fiction from the Massachusetts Artists Foundation, one of three annual awards for short fiction from the Catholic Press Association, and second place in the 2008 Tom Howard Fiction Contest. His poetry and fiction have appeared in many magazines and anthologies, and Press 53 published A Hero for the People, a collection of his short stories set in Brazil, which won the 2014 Catholic Arts and Letters Award. Arthur, welcome to Book. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So your story, The Book of Jotham, is essentially a retelling of the gospel stories from the perspective of a mentally challenged young man. So I'd like to start off just asking if you could share a little about why you thought it was important to kind of reshare the gospels from this different perspective. Uh, the idea came, it was really an answer to prayer. Uh, I was very much at that time uh, identified my being with my intelligence, and I knew that that was not quite right. Um, I saw the many people in the world who who are mentally challenged or who have lost their their intelligence, who have uh, you know dementia or whatever. Um, and I, I was disturbed about my approach to this. Why did I feel threatened by all of this? And um, I took it to prayer. At the time, we were living in Rio de Janeiro, uh, and I went to Our Lady of Mercy Church there and prayed about it. And this story just came to me. It came to me. Uh, I take very little credit for this story <laughs> because it it came to me full-blown uh, with the characters, with, the, uh, with Jotham, who is the uh, protagonist, uh, and the way that it's written, uh, everything. I, I did have to work on it and do some crafting, but the basic story was there from the beginning. And it, it was an answer to prayer. Wow, that's so beautiful. I know the Lord works in mysterious ways. I just love that, that it just came to you when you needed it. That's so beautiful. Now, I would imagine that it's always challenging for a writer to kind of get into the head of his characters. Was it challenging for you to write from Jotham's perspective, um, especially were there any extra challenges um, being that he was a, a mentally challenged character? Well, I always approach uh, I, my one of my sisters, my one of my older sisters was an actress, and she taught me when I was a little boy about method acting in which an actor or an actress becomes the character that they are. And I've carried that into my writing. Uh, when I write, I become that character. And once you have done that, it's relatively easy to write because you see things the way that character would see them and you feel them the way that character would feel them. So I, it really, I can't say that it was difficult. Uh, again, I, I have to say that I, I had received this story, so I had a sense there of uh, very strongly of what was going on and who Jotham was, uh, and that's what carried me through, and I, just keeping true to that all the way through as, as I wrote. That's so interesting. And it's, once you explain it, it really makes sense. But it's so cool, that connection there between the acting and the writing, that it just makes so much sense once you explain it like that. I really like that. 
Something that I found really interesting in the book was that you never refer to Jotham as he or him. You really put the reader in the position of being the main character. You always refer to Jotham as you. And I just thought that was so interesting. So I'd love if you could share a little about why you decided to structure the book that way. Uh, looking at it in retrospect, I, again, it was that was part of the way the story came to me. Um, Looking in retrospect, I think it's really the only way you could do it. Uh, but I can't claim that I can't claim any genius in having thought of it. it. It is the only way that you can convey things from inside of Jotham without being. Ex- if you use he, it would be too external. If you used I, it would be too. Uh, I mean, there there are observations in there that that he might not make so the you the the second person now it breaks every rule of writing i would never recommend to anybody uh, i teach writing classes i would never recommend to anybody the writing in the second person but in this case it was the right right thing to do you know as you're saying that i'm thinking of that adage that you have to know the rules before you break the rules and it, yeah it's just so interesting to me that you're able to do that because when when you know when and how to break the rules and when it's the right time to do it, that's when you get a really great story out of it. So that's really cool that you were able to do that. I love it. It just makes it so much interesting, especially so much more interesting, uh, especially as a reader. I really appreciated that. Something else that was really nice in the book was that you really developed the characters of the apostles, both uh, good descriptions of their physical appearance, but also of their personalities. And that's something we really only get kind of a hint of in the Gospels themselves. So I'm really curious how you developed them as characters. Well, you know, it's interesting. You know, almost all writers I know, whether they're believers or not, believe that at least their best work is is inspired in some way, that it flows through them. Uh, one of the things you'll commonly hear writers tell you is that, is that they're not in control of their characters, that their characters have lives of their own and that they they just kind of appear and they act and they take actions. And every now and then, you know, a writer will say, oh, my gosh, my character did this. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's sort of, uh, and so there's uh, I, there's very much of that there. Uh, I, I made no conscious decision. Well, we're going to have, you know, uh, Thomas be sort of a, a guy who likes to, you know, with a sense of humor and Peter's more solid and they just came that way and, and um, it worked. So that's, it's, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm glad I, you know, I, I reread the book recently and I thought, Oh, these guys are pretty nice guys. They're interesting guys. So. Well, you really did a great job bringing those characters to life. And it sounds like it was just that the Holy spirit was your co-author. So no wonder it came out great. <laughs> Now, jumping all the way to the end of the book, after you finish the story, you do include a little note kind of on background of the book, how it came to be. And I thought it was really interesting that you referenced in there the conversations in our culture around abortion and quality of life. So I was just curious if you could share a little more about how those issues have influenced your writing. Well, I I think it's... I would almost say it's the other way around. Writing the book gave me a deeper appreciation of life than before. Uh, I think that it gave me a deeper appreciation of mentally challenged people. I've had a number of people share that with me, that that they came away from reading Jotham with, with a much more sensitive, empathetic, attitude towards the mentally challenged. And, and that happened to me too, as I wrote the book. Um, part, of the, I, part of the challenge to me in writing the book was exactly that, that, that I had converted to Catholicism. I now had these life, you know, pro-life values, um, uh, something that, that answered, it responded to something deeply in me. I remember even as a kid, there used to be this thing about well, if you had a lifeboat and you had to throw somebody out, you know, who would you choose to throw out of the lifeboat? You know, and my even as a kid, I remember thinking, no, that's the wrong question. We're all in the boat together. You don't throw anybody out of the boat. And and I think that that spirit is part of one of the reasons I became Catholic, um, because I the Catholic faith values the whole person and, and every person. 
Um, and that came, as I wrote Jotham, that became deeper and deeper. And it has continued to grow in me ever since. So, Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, we could probably stay on for another hour talking, but we're coming to the end here. So just thank you again, Mr. Powers, for being here and talking with us. It's really been a pleasure having this conversation with you. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to read from the opening of the book of Jotham. This is a story that builds as it goes along. So it's very important to know the opening uh, in order to understand any part of the book. Light or darkness, warmth or cold, you know them, feel them. The fire in black night, the afternoon sun in winter, the hoe handle, hard and grained in your large palms, moving up and down in your father's field. Up and down, up and down. Not just over there, boy, move along. Father's anger, not dark or cold, but hurt like a wounded dog, snapping out with sharp teeth, hurting you inside. Lord, how have I sinned to have such a son? Shh, Judah, it's no sin. Silence, Sarah. The boy loves us, Judah. He's from God. Mother, lightest light, warmest warmth. When you are near her, you feel inside like the shade of grape leaves on a spring day, cool water in the well, small sparrows in the air. Where she goes, you follow. She bakes bread at the fire and sings. You smile. She turns and smiles up at you, her brown eyes warm and soft. I learned that because uh, my mother read to us when we were little children, uh, particularly Winnie the Pooh, Wind in the Willows, books with characters and beautiful use of language and humor. Uh, and that was where I first learned, learned the impact of language. Uh, it depends on the book. With Jotham, I spent very little time researching. As I mentioned, the book came to me in answer to a prayer. Uh, subsequently, when I, it was published, my my editor, uh, Peter Monjou, hired a, an expert in biblical life who went through the book and found two or three anachronisms that we took out. But other than that, it it just fit together. Um, now, I had been reading scripture for many years, and and that imbued my spirit as I wrote the book. So uh, all of that seemed to work together. There are a lot of good Catholic books. Um, I love uh, Graham Greene's The Power and the Glory. I Willa Cather was not officially Catholic, but she had a Catholic spirit. I love just about everything she wrote. Um, I love uh, the Father Brown stories from Chesterton. Uh, there is so much. Machado de Assis, who is the great Brazilian author, uh, is is just one of my favorites. So uh, there's just a wide range. And then, of course, there, there are new books. I, I do a lot of reading. I mentor a lot of authors. Uh, and there's just new stuff coming out now, which is really fascinating and interesting. So uh, Kay Hinckley, Dina Hunt, uh, uh, Katie Carl, all kinds of really good authors out there. To me, that reading, you get an in-depth experience that you, as much as I love movies and films, movies and films are essentially external. Whereas I think reading is goes inside of you. You go inside of characters more. You get more sense of motivation. You can do more as a writer, I think, than as a, a, a than you can in a film. Um, so to me, reading has always been one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I think. It was what we talked about earlier, the 
the way that characters take on a life of their own. And uh, if you have good characters, they interact with each other and they create the story almost as, as you write. Uh, you may or may not, when you start a story, have an idea of where it's going. But very often it goes in directions that you had no idea that it was going to go in. And it's that that process of creation is is something that I think God gives us as a gift uh, and partly so that we can appreciate a little bit more his creation. Hi, my name is Anne Margaret Lewis. I'm an author. Um, co-founder of the Catholic Writers Guild, as well as one of its former presidents. Um, I first read the book of Jotham when it was released a number of years ago. And and upon um, taking a teaching job at a Catholic high school um, here in Indianapolis, I was allowed to add it to the curriculum from my ninth grade classes. Um, And when I first read the book, though, what really struck me was how he wrote it. It's written in second person, which is very different than your standard fiction. Um, Normally it's in third person, um, like he, she, it, or or I, which is first person. This was second person. And um, I introduced it to my students in a, in a whole set of um, lessons on, on those, on point of view, specifically to have them read in second person, because that is something you don't normally encounter. Um, One might think that this might be a little bit esoteric or perhaps a little bit highbrow, but uh, it's nothing, it's not that at all. In fact, the choice of second person here was deliberate and powerful, and it immediately engages the reader. Um, The reader becomes the protagonist, Jotham, who is intellectually challenged young, uh, young man, and he encounters Christ um, during the first century. And when you understand that he's he's a character who is intellectually challenged, the students I was working with, that kind of hit them because they don't know how these people think. And so suddenly you're in that character's mind when it says to you, you stand up, you do this. Suddenly you become that character. And it's a much more powerful way of writing fiction than most kids would encounter. Um, it's a short book, very short. It's not uh, probably novella length, maybe even shorter than that. So it makes a quick read for students especially, but also adults. Um, I recommend it especially for Holy Week because Jotham does follow Christ as he goes to the cross, and his um, the way he sees the world speaks to us. Um, one of the questions I asked my students in in the questions um, I gave them was, how can in being smart, your intelligence, how can it help your faith or how can it hinder your faith? And um, we had wonderful discussions on that, and it shows just how one should become like a little child enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's a masterfully written book. I mean, you think being um, being simple, because he chose simple words, you would think that it would be much more um, like almost too simple, but it's not. It has so many layers. And I truly, truly do recommend it to adults and Catholic high school teachers or middle school teachers you might consider adding this to your curriculum because it is a very powerful, powerful book. Thank you for joining us for Booked on Shalom World TV. Come back next week for another episode. Until then, happy reading. worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.